Chapter 1 The Game The majority of people see life as a struggle when it is actually a game. The Old and New Testaments provide the rules of the game with amazing clarity, but it is a game that cannot be played well without an understanding of the spiritual laws. According to Jesus Christ, it was a great game of give and take. As the saying goes, a man will reap what he sows. So what a person sends out in word or deed will come back to him. What he offers, he gets back. He will experience hatred if he spreads it. He will experience love when he loves. He is criticized when he criticizes. If he lies, he will be told an untruth. He gets cheated when he cheats. We are also taught that imagination is vital to the game of life. Life's problems come from the heart or from the imagination, so guard them with all your might. 423 Proverbs. This implies that what a man envisions will eventually manifest itself in his affairs. I know a man who hated a certain disease. Although it was a most unusual and difficult state to acquire, he constantly visualized and read about it until it materialized in his body and he died from his distorted imagination. This is how we see how to win in the game of life. The imaging faculty must be trained. A person who has an imaging ability, brought up to imagine only good things, brings all their virtuous desires, health, wealth, love and friends, as well as their greatest ideals, into reality. Imagination has been like Ned to the mental equivalent of scissors because it nay veer stops cutting. Man sees these images every day, and sooner or later he encounters his own creations in the world outside of him. The Greeks believed that in or dur to properly train the imagination, a person must be aware of how their mind works. Know yourself the subconscious, the conscious and the superconscious are the three areas of the mind. Put simply, the subconscious is power without purpose. It works like steam or electricity and gets the job done. Induction power is lacking. The subconscious stores whatever a man deeply feels or vividly imagines, and then executes it in minute detail. For example, a woman I knew as a youth always pretended to be a widow, dressed all in black and covered a heavy black veil. And many found her really funny and clever. She grew up and married a man she was madly in love with. He died shortly thereafter and she spent a long time draping herself in a long veil of black. She made such an impression on the subconscious ooze of herself as a widow. Eventually, despite the chaos caused, everything resolved itself. The carnal or mortal mind was used to describe the conscious mind. It is a person's mind and it perceives life as it seems. It observes devastation, sickness, poverty and death. And limitations of all kinds that affect the unconscious. The universe of impeccable thought exists in the superconscious, the divine mind found within each individual. It has the flawless pattern and divine design that Plato spoke of. Because every person is uniquely created by God. There are some roles that only you can fill and there are things that only you can do. The superconscious has a perfect picture of it. It usually comes to mind as an I am possible goal or something that seems too wonderful to be true. Man's actual fate or whereabouts was revealed to him by the infinite intelligence that is in him. However, many people are unaware of their true destiny and pursue goals and circumstances that do not belong to them, which would only lead to disappointment and failure if achieved. To illustrate, a woman once asked me to give the blessing that she would marry a certain man with whom she was deeply in love. She addressed him as a B. I replied that it would be against spiritual law, but I would still speak the truth in the name of the right. I continued, the guy who was hers by divine right, the man chosen by God. You can't lose a B if he's the right man, and if he's not, you'll get his kind. She visited a B regularly, but their friendship did not progress. When she called one evening she said, you know for the last week. I don't think a B is that great. I answered, maybe he's not God's choice after all. The right man can be someone else. Soon after, she met a new man who declared her his ideal and immediately fell in love with her. He ac Tuli said everything she ever hoped a B had spoken to her. She remarked that it was quite strange. She quickly gave him her heart back and lost all interest in one. This is illustrated by the substitute law. A bad concept was replaced by a good one. There were no casual ties or casualties as a result. According to Jesus Christ, all of these things are added when you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. I give you and he asserted that man is the kingdom. The kingdom is the world of moral principles or divine plan. Jesus Christ preached that a person's words have a signify can't impact on the game of life. He is confirmed by your words, and you are condemned by them. Through careless remarks, many people have brought tragedy into their lives. For example, a woman previously wondered why her life was suddenly marked by constraints and poverty. She used to live in a house, surrounded by beautiful things and had a lot of money. 
we found that she often got tired of looking after her house. You have frequently expressed your boredom with the situation. I wish I could live in a suitcase, she continued. I currently live in this trunk. She had whispered into a suitcase herself. People often laugh themselves into unpleasant events because the subconscious lacks a sense of humor. For example, a wealthy woman often joked about preparing for the home of the poor. Some years later, she had left the subconscious feeling scarce and limited, and she was practically penniless. Luckily, the rule is bi-directional, so a scarcity seen a Rio can be turned into an abundance position. For example, on a muggy summer day, a woman came to me seeking therapy for wealth. She was exhausted, disappointed and discouraged. She said the only thing she owned was $8. I said, well, let's increase the $8 the same way Jesus Christ multiplied the loaves and fishes. He advocated that everyone has the ability to bless, multiply, heal and prosper. What should I do next? She asked. I answered, pay attention to your intuition. Do you have a nagging need to trade or travel somewhere? Does intuition mean intuition or can it be learned? It is man's infallible guidance from within, and I shall discuss its laws in more detail in a later chapter. The lady answered, I'm not sure. I feel like I should return home. I barely had enough money to pay for a car ride. The logical mind or intellect would have advised her to stay in New York, find work and earn some money, since her home was in a faraway city and one of scarcity and limitation. I answered, then go back home never go against a hunch I spoke these things to her on my behalf. Because she is an attractive magnet for all that is hers, infinite spirit opens the door to immense riches. By divine right I instructed her to say it again and again. She also called a woman one day before going stry ght home. She got in touch with a family friend from her past. She miraculously earned thousands of dollars from this acquaintance. She often says that to me. Tell others about the woman who approached you on a whim and brought you eight dollars. There is always enough on the road of man, but it can only be done through spoken word, trust or desire. Jesus Christ Mada it very clear that man must act. You can get anything you ask for. You will find it if you search. In Matthew chapter 77 Jesus says, Knock and it will be opened to you. This verse refers to the works of my hands. You can order me. Infinite intelligence God is always ready to fulfill even the smallest request of man. Every wish, expressed or not, is a demand. The quick fulfillment of a wish often shocks us. For example, one A is tear celebration, after admiring the numerous beautiful rose bushes in the window of the flower shop, I prayed that I would get one and imagined for a brief moment that it would be brought through the door. Easter see me and it brought a beautiful rose tree. The next day I thanked my girlfriend and told her it was exactly what I was hoping for. I sent you flowers instead of a rose tree. Just because I had enacted the law and needed a rose tree, the man had messed up the order and shipped me one. Nothing stands in the way of a man realizing his deepest desires and ambitions. But insecurity and fear. Man can dream without worries. Every wish is fulfilled immediately. The scientific rationale for this and how to eliminate fear from consciousness is discussed in more detail in the following chapter. It is man's only enemy. Fear of lack, fear of failure, fear of illness, fear of losing something and feeling insecure on some level. Why are you afraid, you of little faith, inquire of Jesus Christ? 826 in Matthew. We can see that we need to replace fear with belief, since fear is nothing but reverse belief. Instead, it is trust in evil. They are amazing. The goal of the game of life is to eliminate all negative mental images and see clearly what is good in you. This must be achieved by planting the realization of good in the subconscious. A very successful and intelligent guy once told me that after reading a sign that was hanging in a room, he immediately lost all fear. He saw that this sentence was written in large letters. Why annoy most likely that will never happen. His subconscious was permanently inscribed with these words, and as a result he now firmly believes that only good could have come into his existence and that only good can lead to manifestation. I will discuss many techniques to impress the subconscious in the following chapter. It is man's obedient servant, but care must be taken to give it the right instructions. Man has always had a calm observer. Man always has his subconscious at his side as a silent listener. Every idea and every word is printed on it and implemented down to the smallest detail. It is like recording a singer on the delicate disc of a photographic record. The singer's singing carried every nuance and tone. It is also determined whether he is coughing or hesitating. So let's erase all negative records from the past stored in our subconscious and create new wonderful ones. Say these phrases firmly and forcefully out loud. I am now verbally destroying any false records that were stored in my subconscious. 
having sprung from my own naval fantasies, they will return to the dusty heaps of their original nothingness. I'm perfecting myself now. Health, wealth, love, and the ability to express yourself fully are incorporated through and into the life of Christ. It's game over here this is the square of life. In the following chapters I will demonstrate how a person can change their CIR constances by changing their language. Any person who does not understand the power of the written word is disconnected. The tongue's ability to create either death or life. 1821 Proverbs. Chapter 2. The Law of Prosperity. The Rule of Wealth. Yes, the Almighty will protect you and you will have plenty of silver. One of the most important lessons the race has learned from the script Turish is that God is the source of man and that he can set all that rightfully belongs to him through the spoken word. But he must have absolute faith in what he says. Isaiah declared, My word will not return to me void, but will accomplish what it was sent to do. We now understand that words and thoughts exert a powerful vibrational energy that continually shapes a man's body and affairs. A really desperate woman came up to me and told me that she's going to be sued for $3,000 on the 15th of the month. She was desperate as she had no idea how to get the money. She was my stash, I reminded her, and there's a stash for every need. I then said the word. Thank me for making sure the woman received $3,000 in a timely and appropriate manner. I advi said her to act in accordance with her complete belief and have complete trust. When the 15th rolled around, no money had been shown. She called me and wanted to know what to do. They won't sue you today, I said, because it's Saturday. Your role is to appear wealthy. She invited me to lunch so she could keep her sue rage and demonstrated absolute confidence that you will have it by Monday. When I sat down with her at a restaurant, I advised her to buy an expensive lunch and pretend she just got a $3,000 gift since now is not the time to cut corners. Anything you ask in prayer with the confidence that you will receive it. You must act as if you have already been given something. She invited me by phone the next morning to spend the day with her. I declined. God leaves nothing too late and you are divinely protected. She called back quite excitedly that night and said, My darling, a miracle has happened ed to me. I was in my room when the doorbell rang this morning. Please don't let anyone in, I told the maid. That's your cousin with the long white beard, the maid ad dead as she peered out the window. I advised him to call back. I want to visit him. Hearing the maid's voice just as he was about to turn the corner, he turned and walked back. Oh by the way, how are the finances? He remarked as he was about to leave after spending almost an hour talking. When I told him that I need money, he said, why do you need it, dear? I'll give you $3,000 on the first of the month. I didn't want to tell him I was going to sue. So what do I do? I insisted I need it by tomorrow even though I wouldn't get it until the first of the month. I will continue my treatment. It's never too late for spirit, I said. I express my gratitude for the timely manifestation of the funds she received on the unseen plane. The next morning her cousin called and told her to come to his office and pick up the money. By that afternoon she had $3,000 in her account and was writing checks as fast as her enthusiasm would allow. If you wish for success while preparing for failure, you will experience the scenario you envisioned. For example, I was approached by a man who asked me to explain that a certain debt would be forgiven. He seemed to be spending his time preparing what he would say to the man if he didn't pay his bill, in order to neutralize the situation. The loan should have been paid off when he said those words. The three kings left in the desert without water for their troops and horses provide a fantastic example of this in the Bible. The prophet Elisha was contacted and he gave this amazing advice. You will see no wind, declares the Lord. He will not even see rain, and yet this valley will be cover ed with ditches. When there isn't even the slightest hint that what he's asked for is going to happen, a man has to be prepared. Insight. For example, one lady decided that she needed to look for an apartment the year New York City was experiencing a major rent crunch. It was considered practically impossible. Isn't it unfortunate that you have to keep your stuff and live in a motel, her buddies said regretfully. She answered, you don't have to feel sorry for me as I'm Superman and I'll find a place to stay. She said the sentences. The right apartment was made possible by infinite spirit. She was aware that there was always enough to fill the need, that she was operating in a spiritual dimensi on and that a connection with God was possible. When the tempter, the unfavorable idea, or the thinking mind advised against buying the blankets, she was about to make the purchase. Maybe you won't get an apartment after all, and you won't need it right away, she thought to herself. My trenches are being dug. She prepared for the apartment by buying the linens and pretending that she already had them. There were more than 200 applications, but somehow she found one and got it. The ceilings showed living faith. 
It goes without saying that the dikes of the three kings in the desert were crowded with people. Go through second kings. The common man finds it difficult to get into the spiri tool swing of things because negative images of doubt and fear arise from the subconscious. You are the alien army that needs to be dispersed. This explains why the night is usually darkest just before sunrise. Usually a big protest is preceded by incriminating thoughts. As soon as one challenges subconscious old ideas with the proclamation of great spiritual truth, faults are exposed and can be erased. At this point you have to make your decision. Repeat the truth, celebrate, and express gratitude for what you have already received. All answer before you call. This indicates that every excellent and flawless gift already belongs to man and only awaits his acceptance. The children of Israel were told that they could own any land that they could see. However, man can only get what he imagines getting. Every man can identify with that. He can only see the country in his head. By sticking to the vision, every significant achievement and tremendous work has been realized. And often, just before the great achievement, there is apparent failure and despair. When the children of Israel arrived in the promised land, they were afraid to enter it, saying it was inhabited by giants who made them feel like locusts. We seemed like locusts in our own eyes when we saw the giants there. Almost all men have had this experience. However, the person who is aware of the spiritual law is unaffected by external manifestations and rejoices while still alive. In other words, he maintains his vision while being held captive and expresses gratitude for achieving his desired outcome. Jesus Christ provided an excellent example of this. Don't say it's four months until harvest, he instructed his followers. Lift up your eyes and look at the fields they are ripe, I tell you. Oh, the harvest is ready. His unclouded visi on cut through the material world, allowing him to see things in the fourth dimension exactly as they are in the divine mind, perfect and whole. People must therefore always keep an eye on where their journey is taking them and claim what they have achieved. It can be his perfect health, lots of love, self-expression, home or friends he has already got. All of these perfected, unblemished concepts are stored in the divine mind, which is man's superconscious mind, and must pass through it instead of through it. As an example, I once received an inquiry from a man for successful treatments. He had to raise the money by a certain deadline. The time was almost over when he visited me in need and needed $50,000 for his company. I replied that the bank simply refused a loan and no one wanted to invest in their business. I assume you lost your power when you got mad at the bank. If you can control why ourself first, you can control every circumstance. I continued, go back to the bank and I'll treat. According to my therapy, you're considered to be in love with everyone associated with the bank. Let the heavenly thought arise from this circumstance. He answered, You speak of an impossible woman. The time limit expires tomorrow, the bank closes at 12 and my train doesn't get me there until 10. Tomer Row is also a Saturday. They're not going to do it anyway. I said, It's too late. God doesn't need time. And there is always time. All things are doable as long as he's there. I added, He said, I don't know anything about business, but I know everything about God. When I sit here and listen to you, everything seems great, but when I leave, everything is terrible. He lived in a distant city and I went a week without hearing from him. Then a letter appeared. It has been written. You were accurate I have secured the funding and I promise never again to question the accuracy of anything you have told me. A few weeks later I met him and said, What happy Ned. After all, you obviously had plenty of time, he said. I got there just before 12 because my train was late. They gave me the loan without asking as I quietly entered the bank and indicated that I came for him. The remaining 15 minutes of his authorized time was at that time. A boundless soul still had time. In this case, the person was unable to represent their case on their own. He needs support in maintaining the vision. What one man can do for another is this. When Jesus Christ declared, If two of you agree about anything you ask on earth, my Father in heaven shall do it for you, he spoke the truth. When one becomes overly preoccupied with one's own affairs, one begins to distrust and fear. The sidekick or healer is imperturbable because they can clearly see success, health, or wealth. Mainly because he is not directly involved. Presenting is much easier. Instead of for yourself, for someone else. Therefore, if someone feels that they are slacking off, they should not be afraid to ask for help. According to a wise life observer who once said that no man can fail when a person is watching him succeed. This is the power of vision and many great men have attributed their accomplishments to a wife, sister, or friend who believed in him and steadfastly held to the ideal pattern. Chapter 3 The Power of the Word You are justified by your words, and you are also judged by them. 
knowing the effect of a word, she becomes extremely careful in his speech. He just needs to see how his remarks are received to make sure they aren't wasted. Man always creates laws through his uttered words. Someone I know once said, I always miss a car. Every time it starts the same way I get the re. My habit of catching a vehicle, says his daughter. It will no doubt arrive as soon as I arrive. That went on for a long time. Everyone has their own set of rules for success and failure. The psychology of superstition is as follows. There is no power in a horseshoe or a rabbit's foot. The subconscious develops an expectation based on the man's statement and his belief that it will bring him good fortune, which in turn leads to good fortune. But I'm discovering that when a man has evolved spiritually and is aware of a higher rule, that won't work. There is no turning back, so carved images must be preserved. For example, two of the boys in my class had considerable commercial success for a while. Suddenly everything collapsed. Instead of having them do affirmations, we tried to examine the fact. They had each bought a lucky monkey and prayed to God for success and wealth. Then I remarked, Oh, I see. Put away the happy monkeys and invoke the rule of forgiveness as humans have the ability to atone or correct their mistakes. All was well again when they made the decision to throw the lucky monkeys down a coal mine. However, this does not mean that everything should be thrown away. Horseshoes are lucky charms for the home. However, he must understand that God alone is the source of his power and that the object is only a source of expectation on for him. Crossing the street one day while I was with another friend who was also depressed, she picked up a horseshoe. She was immediately overcome with happiness and optimism. She said God sent her the horseshoe to help her keep her courage. In fact, that was the only thing she could have realized at that point. Her optimism turned to faith, and she ended up setting a great exa MPLE. To be clear, the men who spoke earlier said they would rely solely on the monkeys, but this woman understood the power potential of the horseshoe. I'm aware that it took me a while to shake off the idea that a certain item always ends in disappointment. Disappointment always followed when the article actually leaked out. I discovered that insisting that there are no two forces was the only way to bring about changes in the subconscious. God was the only source of power. As a result, there are no disappointments, which leads to a pleasant surprise. I immediately felt a change in pleasant surprises happen to me. My buddy said nothing could make her climb under a ladder. You give in to belief in two powers, good and evil, and not just one, I protested, in case you're scared. Since God is immutable, there can be no opposing force until man creates the illusion of evil. When she came back from her bank, she wanted to access her box in the safe, but a ladder blocked her access. Without going under the ladder, it was impossible to get to the box. She trembled in terror and turned Ned around. She was unable to face the lion blocking her path. But when she got out into the street, my words were ringing in her ears, so she decided to turn around and cross the street. Ladders kept her in asterisk for years, so it was a significant event in her life. The vault was gone when she went back the way she had come. This is common you don't have to do anything if you feel like it. The law of non-resistance is the least understood. It has been claimed that both magic and brilliance are found in bravery. There is no circumstance that you have to face if you face it boldly. It falls off through sheer willpower. The latter was drawn to the woman's path by fear, which drove fearlessness away. As a result, due to the vibratory power of the words, the unseen forces are always at work for the man who, although unaware of it, is constantly pulling the strings. People who keep talking about illness usually get drawn no matter what a guy says. Man cannot use words too carefully once he understands the truth. For example, a friend of mine often says on the phone. Would you like to visit me and have a charming, traditional conversation? The main themes of this TRA additional lecture, which lasts an hour and contains 500, 1000 hurtful words, are failure, grief and illness. I said, no thanks. I'm tired of these archaic talks. They are too expensive. I'd like to have an old-fashioned conversation. Don't worry about what we desire. Once upon a time there was a saying. This person just has the ODA city to use their words to heal, to bless, or to thrive. Man's words about other people reflect him, as does everything he desires for them. He wishes something. Curses that end like crows. A man will undoubtedly be unlucky if he wishes so me one ill. He hopes for his own success and supports him when he wants to help someone else to succeed. Through the spoken word and clear vision, the body can be rejuvenated and transformed. And consciousness to be completely rid of disease. The metaphysician Undur stands that every disease has a mental counterpart and that treatment of the soul is necessary before Trey Tiamon of the body. The subconscious is the soul and needs to be protected from bad thoughts. 
he restores my soul says the 23rd Psalm that we are reading. This indicates that in order to heal the subconscious or soul, the right thoughts must be introduced into it. Mystical marriage, then, is the union of the soul and spirit, or subconscious and superconscious. They have to be overcome when the subconscious is overwhelmed by the ideals of the superconscious. As one, God and man. Father and I are one. It thus belongs to the realm of ideal concepts. He is man formed in the image and image of God and is given authority and dominion over all that has been created, including his mind, body and affairs. It is reasonable to say that breaking the law of love is the root cause of all sickness and misery. I offer you a new commandment today. When it comes to the game of life, love or goodwill always wins. For example, a woman I know had the symptoms of a terrible skin condition for years. She was devastated when doctors told her the condition was incurable. She performed on stage and feared that she would soon have to give up her job because she lacked other means. But she managed to garner a strong engagement, and she made opening night a huge success. She was happy and content reading the positive reviews from the critics. The next day she received a notice of termination. The next day she received a notice of termination. She was kicked out of the cast because a man there was jealous of her performance. She cried out as she felt hatred and bitterness engulf her completely. Oh God, spare me from hating this man. She worked quietly for hours that night. She spoke a. I quickly entered a fairly quiet phase. I seemed comfortable with everything and everyone, including the man and myself. I continued like this for the next two nights and the third day. I discovered that my skin condition was completely gone. And by asking for affection or goodwill, she had kept the law. Love is both the fulfillment of the law and the sickness that springs from underlying bitterness. Was destroyed. Constant criticism leads to rheumatism because it causes abnormal blood deposits to accumulate in the joints. Jealousy, anger, bitterness, unforgiveness, fear, etc. are all causes of false growths. Every disease is caused by a spirit. I once said in class that I didn't feel well. There's no use inquiring about your condition. We could just say, who's the problem with you? The most common cause of illness is unforgiveness. As a result of our endless discomfort, it will harden arteries, liver or even eyesight. One day I went to a woman who said she had eaten a poisoned oyster and was sick. I answered, oh no, that was just a harmless oyster. You made the oyster sick. What exactly is wrong with you? She answered, yes, around 19 people. She had arguments with 19 different individuals and was so at odds that she attracted the wrong shellfish. Any outer harmony shows that inner and outer are in spiritual harmony. Man's only enemies are those he creates for himself, and his enemies will always be those say of his own family. As our planet begins its journey towards love, personality is one of the last obstacles to overcome. It was the message of Christ. Goodwill among men world peace. Hence the wise strive to improve themselves through their neighbor. He has to start with himself first. Wishing everyone the best and sending them blessed sings. And the amazing thing is that when a guy is blessed, no harm can be done to him. To illustrate, a man asked me to treat him for commercial success. He was selling machines when a competitor showed up with what he promised. The opponent's machine was superior and my mate feared losing. I said, first, we must banish all fear and realize that God has your best interests in mind and that the divine idea must emerge from the circumstances. That is, the AP appropriate person will sell the intelligent machine. Man, turn right, don't think anything bad about this man, I added. Bless him constantly and be willing to keep your machine if it is not God's plan to sell it. He entered the meeting without fear or resistance and gave the other his blessing. He praised the result as quite exceptional. However, I say to you, love your enemies, bless those say who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who use you maliciously and persecute you. The other man's machine didn't work and he sold his without the slightest problem. Goodwill creates a mighty shield around the sender, and no weapon for Jeed against him will succeed. In other words, one's opponents are defeated by love and kindness. As a result, one has no enemies outside oneself. For the one who shows benevolence to man, there is peace on earth. Chapter 4 The Law of Non-Resistance Don't fight evil. Don't let evil overwhelm you instead, use the good to triumph over it. Nothing on earth can resist someone who is completely unresisting. According to the Chinese, water is the strongest LA meant because it is completely impervious to damage. It may wear down a rock and wake up anyone who has been sleeping. Jesus said not to fight evil because he was aware of reality. Since there is no evil, there is no opposition either. 
evil is a product of man's naive imagination or belief in the existence of forces of good and evil. According to an ancient myth, after Adam and Eve ate from the Mayan tree of illusion, they saw two forces instead of one when they looked at God. Therefore, through psychodrama or soul sleep, man has created a false rule of evil for himself. Hence, sleep indicates that a man's soul has been stilled by the race's belief in sin, sickness, and death, among other carnal or mortal ideas, and that his affairs have overcome his delusions. A person's subconscious is their soul, and everything they really feel, whether good or terrible, is projected by this obedient servant, as we shall discuss in the following chapter. His physical condition and private life confirm what he had in mind. The sick experience visions of their own illness, that of the poor and the rich. Little people often ask why a little child could get a disease when they're too young to even understand what it means. I counter that children typically overestimate their parents' fears because they are perceptive and sensitive to other people's perceptions. I once heard a metaphysician say that if you don't control your subconscious, very often someone else will. By constantly thinking about their children's fears and watching for signs, parents unintentionally attract disease and disaster to their children. For example, a mother was asked by a friend if her young daughter had measles. She spoke up right away. Still not. This suggested that she was preparing herself and her child for what she didn't want by anticipating the disease. But the man who was established and in his right place, think. A person who is fearless and wishes only good things to those around him is not susceptible to the negative views of others. Since he only thinks positive ideas, in reality he can only receive positive thaug hts. Resistance is misery because it puts a person in an agonizing state. I was once given a fantastic formula by a metaphysician to exploit all of life's pitfalls. It's non-resistance acne, he did it this way. I once baptized children, and of course they all had different names. I have now stopped baptizing. Children. I do baptize events, however, and give them all the same name. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spy writ, I baptize with prosperity whatever shortcomings I have. We can see the great law of transmutation, based on non-resistance, manifested in this. Every setback turned into a triumph. For example, a lady who needed money and understood the spiritual rule of excess was thrown out. Ongoing affairs with a man that made her feel quite destitute. She began to pick up on his discourse on scarcity and constraints when he mentioned limitations. She therefore despised him and blamed him for her failures. She was aware that she had to feel like she had her supplies before she could show them off. Before something can be experienced, it has to feel lush. One day she realized she was trying to change circumstances and saw two abilities instead of one. She then baptized the circumstance while blessing the man. Success, she said. This individual is here for my benefit because there is only one power, God. And my success? Exactly what he apparently wasn't there for. Soon after, through him, she came into contact with a woman who offered her four services and paid many thousands of dollars. The man then moved to a faraway town and peacefully disappeared from her life. Explain the following. Every human being is a valuable link in the web of my good, for every human being is God manifest and awaits the chance to fulfill their own personal divine purpose. By blessing your opponent, you take away their weapons. The arrows he shoots become blessings. This rule applies to nations as well as to people. Love and goodwill are sent to every resident of the blessing nation, and the nation loses its ability to do harm as a result. The right knowledge of non-resistance is only accessible to man through spiritual insight. I'm responding to my students' frequent comments that I don't want to be a doormat. Nobody can ever get over you if you use unresistance with intelligence. Another picture. I remember one day I was nervously waiting for an important call. I refused to take incoming calls and refrained from mocking calls myself, believing it might interfere with the call I was expecting. The call will come at the right time, allowing infinite intelligence to arrange itself. However, I began to take matters into my own hands, making the fight my own and not the gods, and I remained tense and anxious. After about an hour it didn't ring and I looked at the phone to see that the receiver had been switched off and the phone disconnected for that time. The phone had been completely overshadowed by my fear, worry, and belief in intervention. As I became aware of what I had done, I began to bless the circumstance. I immediately christened it a success and said I am unable to lose any calling that is due me by divine authority. I am not under the law I am under grace. A friend sprinted outside to the nearest phone to call the company and ask to be reconnected. She walked into a packed grocery store, but the owner ignored his customers to pick up the phone. Immediately after my phone was connected, I received a very important call, 
followed by another call an hour later. Ships come across a calm sea I've been waiting for. Man will continue to be in a predicament as long as he continues to deny it. It will haunt him if he flees from it. For example, when I said that to a woman one day, she remarked on how accurate I was. I felt Dupree's said at home. My critical mother was someone I didn't like. And aggressive. So I fled and got married. However, I married my mother's son since my husband looked exactly like my mother and I had to deal with the same problem again. Coordinate with your counterpart immediately. It means accepting that the bad state is good, not letting it affect you and letting go of it on your own. The statement, none of these things move me, is quite powerful. The discordant state is caused by some harmony within man. If he doesn't show an emotional response to a troubling circumstance, he disappears permanently from his path. So we see that man is still working on himself. I respond when someone asks me to provide therapy to transform my spouse or siblings. No, if you are changing spouses and brothers, I offer therapy to help you change. One of my classmates was prone to telling lies. I warned her that this was a failed strategy and that if she lied she would be misled. She answered, I do not care. I couldn't function without lies. One day she was on the phone with a man she was very much in love with. I don't trust him I know he's lying to me, she mumbled as she turned to face me. I answered, considering you are lying to yourself, someone must be lying to you. And you can be sure that it is the specific person you want to know the truth about. Later I met her and she informed me that I had been cleansed from the lie. I asked what treated you, to which she replied. I used to live with a woman who lied more often than I did. By recognizing one's faults in others, one is often healed by them. Living in the past is a strategy for failure and a transgression of spiritual law, but life is a mirror and we only see ourselves reflected in those closest to us. Jesus Christ proclaimed, Behold, the hour has come, the day of salvation is come. His wife became a pillar of salt as she turned and looked at him. Past and future are the thieves of time. Man should be thankful for the past, letting go of it when it holds him back, and be grateful for the future, knowing that it has innumerable joys in store for him. However, he should live fully. At the moment, for example, a woman complained to me that she had no money to buy Christmas presents. She spoke. The past year was really unique. I bought nice presents and had enough money, but this year I hardly smell. You'll never show money if you're pathetic, I replied. At that time, prepare your Christmas presents while fully living in the moment. She screamed, dig your trenches and the money will come. I understand what to do. I said, I'll get some tinsel, string, Christmas seal, and wrapping paper. When you do that, the presence will appear and attack itself to you. Holiday seal. This also showed a lack of financial concern and trust in God. Keep every pen and why you have because you don't know if you'll get any more, the rational mind advised. Bought her seals, paper and twine, and a few days before Christmas she was given many hundreds of doll lars. The purchase of the sigils in yarn had left the subconscious with a sense of anticipation and prepared the way for the appearance of money. She had enough time to buy all the presents. Man must be focused on the present. So take a close look today this is how the sunrise greets us. He must be mentally alert, on the lookout for clues and seize every opportunity that comes his way. One day I repeated over and over again in my head. Don't let me miss the trick, infinite spirit I was informed of something extremely significant that evening. Starting the day on the right foot is crucial. For example, make an affirmation as soon as you wake up. Do what you want. This day is one of completeness in everyday life. I am grateful for this wonderful day. MI Rackles will always happen, and miracles will never stop. One will experience miracles and wonders in one's life if one makes this a habit. I am amazed to read what is in a book in front of you one morning. I kept saying that as it seemed to be my message for the day. Take a moment to marvel at what you see. About noon I received a considerable sum of money which I had hoped to put to some use. I will include the affirmations that I have found particularly powerful in the next chapter. However, one should never use an affirmation until it is fully convinced Ching and comfortable to one's consciousness. In Aditian, affirmations are often modified to meet the needs of different people. For example, the following has helped many people succeed. I do fantastic things in a fantastic way. For excellent compensation I offer fantastic service. One of my students contributed the last two lines after I gave her the first two. It was a very strong argument, as rhymes are just something to process subconsciously and there should always be a perfect reward for excellent work. She started singing it out loud and soon she started doing amazing things in wonderful ways. And provided excellent service for an excellent reward. 
An economics student who was another student grabbed it and Chan Ji'd the term to business. He repeated, I offer fantastic service for a wonderful fee and I have a wonderful business and a wonderful way of doing things. Despite the fact that there had been no activity in his affairs for months, he made a $41,000 trade that afternoon. Every affirmation must be worded correctly and cover all the bases. For example, I knew a woman who asked for a job even though she was in dire need. She received a lot of work, but was never compensated for it. She knows that great service should be traded for great income. Man has a divine right to have much more. Both his barns and his cup must overflow. This is God's plan for man, and when he transcends the limitations of his own consciousness, he will enter the golden age and have all the good things he has ever desired. Chapter 5 The Law of Karma and the Law of Forgiveness Only what man contributes is received. Boomerangs are used in the game of life. Man's actions, words, and ideas eventually came back to him with amazing praise scion. This is the principle of karma, which in Sanskrit means, whatever a man sows must be given back to him. He will also reap what he sows. To illustrate, a friend of mine told me this story of how she applied the law. I earn all my karma from my aunt, she claimed. Someone always responds to everything I say to her. I once told my aunt, who spoke to me at dinner, that I was often irritable at home. Stop talking. I want to eat quietly. The day after, I had lunch with a woman I wanted to make a lasting impression on. She told me to stop talking if I was speaking briskly. I want to eat quietly. Because of her high level of consciousness, my friend's karma reappears faster than someone on the mental plane. A person who knows the spiritual law but does not follow it suffers tremendously. The more one understands, the more responsible one is. The first step to wisdom is fear of the law of the Lord. Many Bible verses become much easier to understand when we read them in the context of the law of the Lord. I will take my revenge. I will pay it back, the Lord law announces. Not God, but the law demands retribution. God regards man as spotless, made in his own image, with unlimited power and authority. This is the ideal concept. Man is registered in divine consciousness and awaits recognition. Man can only be what he thinks he is, and he can only do what he thinks he is capable of. There is an old saying that nothing happens in silence. Humans first notice their success or failure. Before it comes into view from the scenario created in its own head, its happiness or its fear. We have seen this happen when a mother imagines her child's illness, or when a woman imagines her spouse's success. And you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free, said Jesus Christ. Hence we see that knowledge, especially the understanding of spiritual law, is the key to attaining freedom from all unsatisfactory circumstances. Authority comes before obedience, and when one obeys the law, the law obeys them in return. Before it becomes a human law, the law of electricity must first be observed. Even if treated carelessly, it becomes man's deadly enemy. As for the rules of the mind. For example, a strong-willed woman who owned property belonging to a friend and often imagined living there. She moved into the apartment when the man died over time. After a few years, she asked me, do you think I had anything to do with this man's death? After learning about the Spiri tool law. Yes, you paid your karmic obligation, I said. Your desire was so strong that everything had to give way to it. Soon after, her beloved spouse died and the house remained uninhabited for many years. However, if the original owner was telling the truth, neither he nor her spouse could have been influenced by their ideas. However, the lady should have made it clear that they were both subject to the law of karma, since she felt a strong longing for the house. Grant me the fit ting equally lovely habitation, infinite wisdom. Is this the home that God owes me? The heavenly choice would have offered perfect satisfaction and good to all. The only reliable pattern to follow is the divine pattern. Desire is a powerful energy that must be properly channeled to avoid chaos. A good man should constantly demand only what is his divine right to show that the first step is the most important. Going back to the example, if the lady had adopted this mindset, I wouldn't be able to lose the house I so desperately want. Give me his match if it's not. If it had been a heavenly decision for her, perhaps the man would have made a peaceful decision to leave. Or another house would have been used in its place. Anything brought about by personal will is always against God and will never succeed. Man is reprimanded. I will prevail, not you. And the strange thing is that when man gives up his personal will and allows his limitless intellect to work through him, he always gets exactly what he wants. Stan, you remain convinced of the effectiveness of the law of the Lord. For example, a, a woman in great need approached me. The mother was horrified as her daughter had made the decision to embark on a very risky journey. 
She said that despite her best efforts, including pointing out the risks involved Ed and being forbidden to leave, the daughter became increasingly disobedient. I told the mother that I was determined. Her fear of travel just attracts her, and you have no right to impose your own will on your daughter. I said, poor guy pulls what he fears. Give up control of your thoughts and let go. Use that phrase and put it in God's hands. I entrust this matter to infinite love and wisdom if this journey is part of the divine plan. I bless it and stop resisting it otherwise I bless it and continue to resist. I am grateful that it has now collapsed and gone. Her daughter informed her a day or two later. Mother, I decided against it and everything is back to normal. It's learning to be still that guys seem to find so chow lenging. In the chapter on non-resistance, I will elaborate on this commandment. I will provide another illustration of how harvesting and sowing came about. A woman came up to me and said that she had been given counterfeit $20 cash at the bank. She was quite annoyed because she said that bank employees would never admit a mistake, to which I replied. Let's examine nay the circumstance and see what drew him to you. She paused before saying, I am aware of that. The law sent her some stage money because they have a no idea what jokes are, because I paid a mate a lot of stage money for a joke. I said, we will now apply the rule of forgiveness to resolve the conflict. The principle of forgiveness is the cornerstone of Christianity. The Christ in each individual is their redeemer and deliverance from all unhealthy situations. Christ saved us from the curse of karmic law. So I said, infinite spirit, we thank you and appeal to the rule of forgiveness. She cannot lose the $20 that is her due by divine right, since she is subject not to law but to grace. Now, I advised, go back to the bank and tell them openly that you accidentally received the money there. She followed the instructions and to her surprise they were really nice and offered her another bill while apologizing. Understanding the law, therefore, enables a person to correct his mistakes. Man cannot make himself what he is not. If one wants wealth, one must first become wealthy in consciousness. For example, a woman once asked me for advice on how to be successful. She showed little care in her domestic affairs and her house was a mess. If you want to get rich, you have to keep order, I told her. Order is the primary rule of heaven, and all persons of great wealth are orderly. You'll never get rich with a lit match and a pincushion, I concluded. She immediately started organizing her home as she had a fantastic sense of humor. She rearranged the furniture, arranged her secretary's drawers, cleaned the carpets and was soon preparing meaningful annual accounts. A gift from a family member. The woman changed and kept her appearance. Financially stimulated by constant awareness of her surroundings, anticipating wealth and trusting in God as her source. Many people are unaware that gifts and possessions are investments and that hoarding and keeping always results in losses. There is something that disperses but multiplies. There is, but it tends towards poverty. Owners have more than his meat. For example, I knew a man who wanted a fur-lined jacket. He visited many shops with his wife, but none had what he was looking for. They are all too cheap, he claimed. Eventually he was shown a piece that the seller said was worth $1,000, but the manager would sell him for $500. Since it was an off-season, rational thinking would have estimated that his financial fortune was worth around $700. He wasn't very rational and relied heavily on his intuition, but you can't spend most of your money on a coat. He answered as he turned to his wife. I will make a lot of money if I get this coat. So his wife reluctantly agreed. About a month later, he received a commission of $10,000. Thanks to the cloak that linked him to success and wealth, he felt so prosperous. Without the coat he would not have gotten the commission. It was an investment that, if man avoided these calls to donate or spend, would yield significant returns. The same amount of money is spent in an unattractive or uninteresting way. For example, one woman told me that she had told her family that she could not afford Thanksgiving dinner on Thanksgiving. Even though she had the money, she decided to put it aside. A few days later, someone broke into her room and took the exact amount that dinner would have cost from the HQ drawer. The person who fearlessly deals with intelligence is continually rejected by the law. For example, one of my students went shopping with her little nephew. She informed the boy that she could not afford to buy the item, but the child insisted on having it. She saw immediately that she was chasing lack and ignoring God as her source. She then paid for the item and picked up the same amount she paid for it from the store on her way home. Trusting them completely, men can be found without limits and without emotions. However, the proof of your faith must come first, so be it you. Faith is the basis of what is hoped for and the proof of what is unseen. Because of this, the vision is held steady by faith, the negative images are eliminated, 
and if we do not falter, we will reap when the time is right. The good news, the gospel, that there is a law that is superior to the rule of karma and that this law goes beyond it, was brought to us by Jesus Christ. It's the law of grace. Oh please forgive man is liberated from the rule of cause and effect by length. The principle of consistency not by law but by grace. From what is said, this humble fellow is reaping where he has not sown. God just pours out all his gifts on him. Everything the kingdom offers is his. The individual who has triumphed over race or the global idea awaits him in this sustained state of bliss. All tough there are difficulties in the world, Jesus Anne's word, be of good cheer. I have conquered the world. The dominant worldview is one of sin, sickness and death. He declared that sickness and sadness would disappear and that death itself would be conquered after seeing their utter absurdity. From a scientific point of view, we now understand that death could be avoided by implanting the belief in endless youth and vitality in the subconscious. Being just a source of power without purpose, the subconscious obeys orders without hesitation. The resurrection of the body would take place under the supervision of the superconscious, the Christ or God within man. Man would no longer ignore his mortality and his body. It would morph into Walt Whitman's song, Body Electric. For the empty tomb and atonement for sins are the cornerstones of Christianity. Chapter 6 Throw the Load. Address the unconscious. Man's greatest goal is to discover a simple, quick technique to make a positive impression on the subconscious when he is aware of his own abilities and the workings of his mind. Because understanding the truth only intellectually will not bring about change. The easiest method, in my experience, is by pouring. A doctor I have met would like to express the burden in this way. He said that the law of gravity is the only thing in nature that gives weight to things. And Jesus Christ said that if a boulder could be lifted very high above the earth, it would have no weight. He said his yoke was light and his burden light. He had transcended the vibration of the earth and was functioning in the fourth dimension, which consists solely of perfection, fulfillment, life and joy. He spoke. All who are weary and burdened, come to me and I will give you rest. Take up my yoke it is light for you and my weight is light. Psalm chapter 55 also instructs us to turn our burdens over to the Lord. The Bible has several verses that state that gods, not men, are at war, and that man must be still and see the deliverance of the Lord. This indicates that the department fighting man's conflict is the superconscious or Christ within. Relieves him of his obligations. We can observe that when a person carries a burden, it breaks the law. Since a stress is initially an idea or situation that originates in the subconscious, it seems almost impossible to influence the subconscious. By the logical or conscious intellect. The intellect, like the thinking mind, is limited in its ideas and full of insecurities and fears. How scientific is it to place the emphasis on the superconscious or Christ within where it is made light or reverted to its original nothingness? For example, a woman in dire need of money would use this remark to awaken Christ in her superconscious. I give the Christ into this burden of scarcity, and I am free to enjoy enough. Her burden was a belief in scarcity, which she transferred to the superconscious in exchange for a belief in plenty, leading to an avalanche of supplies. We read that Christ in you is your great hope. Another illustration. A student of mine got a new piano, but she couldn't put it in her studio until the old one was gone. She was confused then. All tough she had no idea where to send the antique piano, she still wanted to keep it. When the new piano failed, so did she. Should be sent right away. She said it actually had nowhere to go and was already on the way. I throw this weight on the Christ within me and I walk free, she thought as she repeated it. A friend of hers asked if she could borrow her old piano when her phone rang a short time later. And then it was removed. I know a lady whose burden was resentment, she said a few minutes before the next one came. I surrender my grudges to the Christ within me and free myself to be kind, peaceful, and joyful. The supreme superconscious poured love into the subconscious and everything in her life changed. She was tormented by anger for years, which also imprisoned her soul, subconscious. The phrase should be repeated, often for hours, aloud or softly, with calm but firm determination. I've long said it's like winding a Victrola. We must tease ourselves with spoken words. I have noticed that once the charge has been ejected one seems to see well yet it is difficult to see properly when experiencing the spirit of the flesh. Fear and doubt corrupt mind and body, and when imagination gets the upper hand, they bring misfortune and disease. I relieve the inner Christ of this burden by consistently repeating the assertion. With the clarification of vision comes a sense of relaxation, and sooner or later the manifestation of good, be it health, happiness, or provision, occurs. I once received a question from a student about the hours before dawn. 
I have often alluded to this fact in an earlier chapter. Before the big demonstration, everything seems to go wrong, and great sadness clouds consciousness. It indicates that the doubts and concerns that have existed for millennia are emerging from the subconscious and rising to the surface to be erased. The student said, at this point man should clap his hands like Jehoshaphat and express his gratitude that he has saved, though he seems surrounded by the adversary, the circumstances of need or sickness. How much time do you have to spend in the dark? And I said that you can't see in the dark until you take the weight off. Active belief is always necessary to I impress the subconscious. Without action, faith is dead. I have endeavored to emphasize this concept in these chapters. When Jesus asked the crowd to sit on the ground before giving thanks for the loaves and fishes, he showed active faith. I'll use another illustration to demonstrate how important this step is. Indeed, active faith serves as a gateway for people to reach their promised lands. A woman had been estranged from her devoted spouse because of a misunderstanding. He rejected all attempts at reconciliation and broke off all contact with her. She denied the appearance of a separation after learning about spiritual laws. That's what she said. In divine thinking there is no division. As a result, I cannot be cut off from the love and companionship due me by divine right. She showed active faith by making sure he had a seat at the table each day, and imprinted the subconscious with a memory of his homecoming over a year ago. But she stood her ground. And one day he entered. Music often shapes the subconscious. The four-dimensional nature of music frees the mind from limitations. It gives the impression that great things are possible and easy to accomplish. My friend uses her Victrola every day for this reason. This gives her complete peace and freedom of imagination. Another woman often dances while confirming things. Her words are executed with incredible power through the rhythm and harmony of music and movement. The student must remember not to hate the day of the little things. Traces of land inevitably appear before demonstrations. Before Columbus arrived in America, he noticed birds perched on branches, indicating land was nearby. This also applies to the demonstration. But often the learners are disappointed because they think it is the demonstration itself. For example, one woman men teoned a series of plates. Soon after, she received an outdated and damaged crockery from a friend. I asked for dishes but all I got was a cracked plate, she said as she approached me. I answered. The slab had hardly any landmarks. It signals the arrival of your dishes. Think of it like birds and algae. Soon after, the food came as a result of persistent unconscious impressions. If someone pretends to be rich and successful, they will eventually reap the rewards. Children always make up stories, so they are not allowed to enter the kingdom of heaven until they are converted and become little children. For example, I know a woman who is quite penniless, but who cannot be made to feel that way. She received a meager sum of money from wealthy friends who kept telling her how poor she was and how important it was to be careful and save. Despite her warnings, she would give Somione a present or spend all her money on a hat when she was in a euphoric mood. Her attention was often drawn to expensive jewelry, clothing, and other items, but she never harbored jealousy. She lived in a fantastic world where only wealth seemed real. Soon after, she married a wealthy man, which made the rings and other items obvious. I'm not sure if the man was heavenly choice, but Proct had to be in her life exactly how she envisioned it. Opulence. Man cannot find serenity or contentment until all underlying fears are conquered. Fear is energy that has been misdirected and needs to be converted into belief. Jesus said, Why are you afraid? O you who believe little, to him who believes that all things are possible. My students often ask me how to overcome my fears. I responded by approaching the object you are afraid of. The lion's ferocity comes from your fear. If you approach the lion, he will disappear. If you flee, he will follow you. I have seen in earlier chapters how the lion of need vanished when one voluntarily spent money and demonstrated his confidence that God was his source and therefore infallible. A large proportion of my students have overcome extreme poverty. They are now amply provided for, having shed any fear of leaving money away. Knowing that God is the giver and the gift makes an impression on the subconscious. As a result, he is one with the gift because he is one with the giver. A wonderful statement. I thank God the giver now for giving me God. It often takes explosives to remove this erroneous belief from the subconscious, since people have sapara ted themselves from their good and their supply for so long through thoughts of separation and lack. And in the example above, the dynamite is a significant problem. How man overcame his weakness by showing su rage. Man should examine himself every hour whether he is acting out of faith or out of fear. Make up your mind today. Which should we obey, fear or faith? Your own fear could be your personality. Don't stay away from those you fear.
They will either approve of golden links in the chain of good guys if you're willing to greet them with a smile, or gracefully disappear from the path. If you are concerned about disease or germs, be brave and unperturbed in a germ-rich environment. He too would be protected. Fear brings men to the level of the germ, and one can only become infected by vibrating at the same frequency as the germ. The disease-carrying germ is undoubtedly a creation of the carnal mind, since all knowledge must objectify.